I'm going to hold down the laser. It automatically tracked him and found the target straight away, so the missile is ready to fire. Hello there guys, it's Matmus. Thank you for joining me today on this video. I hope you're having a good day. So today we are working with SteelBeast Pro and doing a bit of a tutorial video on how to utilize and use the Javelin Missile Team Team game. Now, as of lately, uh, a lot of uh, people have been uploading some really cool stuff onto the SteelBeast.com website. Guys, I've mentioned it before, I'm going to say it again. If you need any information or any kind of updates, mods or details about SteelBeast Pro, uh, please go check out that website. It has a forum, it has a whole host of downloads that you can modify your game with. Um, and just a whole amazing group of people who constantly are trying to improve on and talk about and discuss and such this game. And in saying that, we recently had a upload from a gentleman called Toy Guy, uh, and he created this scenario for us to actually be able to practice and learn how to use the Javelin Missile Team. Now, let's just talk a little bit about the Javelin within game and kind of what the systems do and how they work and what it's actually designed for. So, most of us already know that the Javelin is an anti-tank guided weapon system and it's very effective at engaging tanks uh, from a top-down uh, attack mode. What it means by top-down attack, the missile is launched, comes up at a high trajectory and high altitude, turns at the last minute back down onto the target right through the top of the turret, obviously the weakest point in most tanks are. Uh, very, very effective weapon system. There is footage out there of them just absolutely annihilating tanks. Um, and in game, it is very deadly and very help helpful to have um, because infantry could take this equipment into wood lines, into hillsides, tuck away, hide away, uh, difficult for vehicles to see from long distance, and engage uh, with this missile from roughly about 2,000 meters in all different modes. Um, it does have about a minimum range of about 65 meters, but to be utilizing that at this range would be kind of ridiculous. So let's just go over a quick introduction uh, written very kindly by uh, Toy Guide. So, introduction. The Javelin is a man-carried fire and forget anti-tank guided missile system. So what he means by fire and forget is basically once you fire the trigger uh, so, and the missile is on its way, you don't have to worry about continuing to watch the target or continuing to laze the target or even trying to guide the missile. It is literally a missile launches out of the tube and you don't have to worry about a thing. You can relocate and get out of there, which we'll talk about a little later. It consists of the command launch control unit or the clue and the trigger assembly and the missile itself. There are no missiles left in the system once it is fired and the clue is associated with a thermal imaging system and can still be used as long as there is a battery cooling unit or BCU available. These are currently unlimited in Steel Beasts. The missile contains its own thermal seeker, which is used to lock the missile onto its target and track it during flight. The missile has two profiles, top attack and direct attack. As I already mentioned with the top attack, direct attack is going to be pretty expensive self-explanatory, the missile goes directly to the target, which can be selected before the launch. Before the missiles can be fired, its thermal seek has to be cooled down. This is done by puncturing the BCU, the battery control, uh, sorry, cooling unit, and waiting for it for a little while. Once cooled, the gunner can then lock the missile onto the target, and only then can the missile be fired. After launch, it's on its own, and the firing team is free to relocate and scan for additional targets. The clue features two triggers, a seeker trigger, which is used to puncture the BCU and activate the seeker on the missile, and the fire trigger, which, pretty self-explanatory, is used to actually fire the missile. It is important to note that the seeker trigger must be held down in order for the fire trigger to actually work. It is also important to note that with the BCU once punctured, it will only last for about four minutes. So basically guys, once you have lased a target, as kind of a safety feature to allow you to continue that missile actually tracking its target, you have to actually hold down the lasing button along with the trigger button, so the missile will actually pop out of the tube. Also though, once you puncture that cooling unit, okay, it'll only last for about four minutes, it's not an infinite. So you need to be aware of that when you're actually engaging targets and, you know, scanning the horizon and you know, trying to locate targets is don't puncture that clue to uh, that BCU too quickly because you may uh, fail the missile after about four minutes trying to continue scanning. Uh, remember, find your target, lock onto it last minute, uh, puncture your BCU, and then off you go. As mentioned before, the minimum range for the Javelin in direct fire mode is 65 meters, while the minimum top-down attack mode is 150 meters. Maximum range is 2,000 meters in all modes for the Javelin missile. So what we're going to do in this particular scenario is a kind of a short 10 minute session and it's designed to teach us how to employ the Javelin missile teams in Steel Peace as of version 4.006. 
The tutorial messages will appear during this mission, providing information of inst instruction, and occasionally will be asked to activate certain triggers when the scenario proceeds. So let's get going then. Okay guys, so here we are, we have our uh, javelin team on top of this hillside here observing this crossroads, which is going to be our main objective. Uh, and we're basically just going to go running over our tutorial scenario. So the fantastic thing about this scenario guys, and it is completely downloadable off SteelBeasts uh, Pro.com, is, uh, or SteelBeast.com, is everything is done for you. Every, the lesson is completely uh, narrated as you go, the triggers are all set in place. So basically once you start, which we're going to do now, it's just going to guide us through exactly what we have to do. So here's our beautiful javelin missile team crawling into position and we're observing our crossroads to the front here. So welcome, your squad has been tasked to defend the area to the north. Press F7 to move into the squad leader's position, this gentleman holding the javelin. Here we are. So we're in the first person position, looking at the clue and the missile tube itself. Now we need to access the missile site. Press F2 and we use the numpad, hash slash and the uh, little star thing <laughs> to focus the thermal imaging site. I use alt and mouse wheel and it does the exact same thing. There we can go, you can see the clarity changing. Now to puncture the BCU and cool the thermal seeker, we press the laser key, which is to me the right mouse button or normally control. As you can see, there's a yellow light to the right. When the yellow light goes out, the seeker is then cooled down and then we can press shift one when the seeker is cooled. Shift one is just basically setting the trigger guys. It's nothing to do with the javelin itself, so don't worry too much. As you can see, the weapon system is now cooled down. We are ready to engage targets. So we're scanning, scanning, scanning. I see a target right here and we're gonna press shift one to allow the scenario to continue. Now we press N to magnify the sight. So we're basically gonna zoom in on this target right now and I'm gonna again change the clarity. Okay, we've located the T90 to the north and we use the arrow keys to adjust the targeting brackets. So we're gonna go one more time zoom. And as you can see, we have targeting brackets now that have kind of popped up and down. We can actually increase the target and decrease the target reticle box. Okay, so we wanna try and close it in, get it nice and tight as best as possible. If there were several other tanks in this area, Okay, and I had a really wide target box. Okay, it may be confusing for what the missile to engage. Okay, so we need to try and narrow it down as best as possible. Close in that target bracket, lock in that T90 in the full sight picture. And I'd say we're probably good about there. We have a full T90 in sight. Okay, so it's flashing as of right now. Okay, so what we need to do is once target brackets have actually located the T90, we have to actually laze the target. So we're gonna let the next part of the scenario continue. We now press the laser or control key, which is the right mouse button for me, to activate the seeker in the missile itself, and the crosshair will flash. There we go. Okay, so once I've pressed it once, it will just keep flashing, okay? So, while holding the laser button, we can then press the missile to launch. But before we do so, we have to hold the laser down button anyway to acquire the target. The missile is not fully tracking it yet. So, we've pressed it once and it flashes. We're gonna hold our brackets over the target again. Fortunately, my mouse sensitivity is a little intense here. And I will say there, that's good for me. Okay, now we're gonna hold it down. Now the missile has tracked that target. If you notice, no matter where I move the main large crosshair, okay, the box, target box is still focused on the T90. At this point now, I'm pretty much ready to fire. If you notice in the top right, K is selected into seek mode and top down attack, which is the best form for engaging this particular kind of tank for sure. So here we go, we're going to fire the missile and once we fire the missile, we've been told we need to relocate and change our view, which allows us to actually get out of the area uh, once the missile is gone, it is autonomous, i.e. fire and forget, we don't have to worry about it. So I'm holding my right mouse button to laze and track that target continually. I'm then gonna fire the missile out of the tube, it'll pop away and off she goes. The sight will then change back to a more X magnified view to allow us to scan for more targets. So here we go, firing, firing, firing now. Okay, so missile is away now. Okay, I can release the laser button. The tube is now dry or empty. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that missile to come in, and there she goes. Looks like she's getting a beautiful ammunition cook-off on there. We're now gonna press C to allow my infantry to relocate. Okay, so they're gonna go relocate their equipment. Okay, he's putting his missile away, and my boys are off running away. This is a really, really good method, guys, is fire and forget missiles are fantastic because we don't have to continue looking for that target, tracking it. We can just get the missile away and off we go. Shoot and scoot maneuver, and this is fantastic for infantry because they can basically get out of the danger zone. They've already started to egress to the rear of this hillside, which is good, getting them out of the eyesight of the crossroads, and any further units that could be observing their position to return fire, which, being on top of this hillside, is very, very, 
very likely. Um, so we're actually trying to egress now out of that uh, firing position, trying to find a new one. We've been told a T90 platoon will be traversing the crossroads soon, so we have to take them out. Remember though guys, that the BCU or battery cooling unit will expire after 4 minutes, so don't puncture it too early when you're tracking targets. Find a target, make sure you have a good line of sight, scan for targets furthermore, okay, so you're ready for the next missile, okay, and then continue on from there. So it looks like my troops have reset up uh, the next Javelin missile, we're fully reloaded, ready to re-engage, and again we're going to scan the horizon making sure we look for targets. Remember guys though, don't puncture that unit too quickly, and to puncture that unit, we're just going to do the right mouse button, the yellow light will then be solid, and once the yellow light goes out, we know the BCU is cooling, our oh, system ready to go. So let's keep an eye out, keep an eye out, we're going to be scanning for targets here. So there's our old T90, it looks like we're getting some artillery to our right at the last position, so that's good, we relocated, that was a smart move. As you can see there, it says once you have fired, you will likely have been spotted. Good thing we relocated. So as the tutorial is trying to mention here, and uh, Toy Guy is trying to explain, is don't just sit in one position. Okay, it looks like we've already got our first target, so I can clearly track him. I've got a good field of view. I'm going to puncture that BCU right now. I'm going to zoom in nice and quick. Try and get in on that target. Okay, once I've got a cooled unit, I can then zoom in all the way and start getting that seeker mode plugged in, ready to fire. Okay, so here we go. We can start tracking the target. He's pretty much uh, moving quite quickly, so I don't want to close my brackets in too much. Okay, I want to try and make it a nice wide open target box. He's held still there, so I'm going to laze him. Okay, and I'm going to hold down the laser. It's automatically tracked him and found the target straight away, so the missile is ready to fire out the tube. Holding the laser button down, I'm going to release the missile. Fire and forget, I don't have to worry about it. I can continue scanning for other targets right now, but we're going to watch it explode because it just looks really badass. There we go, turret pops off like a freaking firecracker. It looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, so my team is now reloading my missile tube. That other T90 is absolutely shitting himself and wondering what the fuck do I do now. Looks like he can't see where we are, which is good. Turret is on the floor, he just run over it. He's just run over the corpses of his charred comrades. That's fine, we're preparing another missile to send him on his merry way to join them. Okay, so here we go again, we've scanned the target. Now he's become obscure right now, this is obviously a not a good position to try and engage him from, so we're going to wait until he pops out behind the wood line. Whilst he does that, we can scan for more targets. Uh, there's the second T90 just behind him. Okay, so here we go, we're into zoom again, we're zooming nice and close, we're going to puncture that clue, uh, sorry, that uh, BCU. Okay, give it a bit of time to uh, to get ready. I should have done that whilst he was obscured, but that's okay. You've got a bit of time here. Okay, once it's cooled down, I'm going to go back into tracking and seeking mode. I'm going to lock onto that target, hold down the laser button, missile away. As you can see, once again, the missile is tracking beautifully. It does its own thing. Okay, it's going to come nice and high and slam right into the top. Okay, it looks like we've got another beautiful ammunition cook-off there. Okay, and we're getting another missile reloaded. The other T90 is now kind of thinking, I might as well just park up, shut the engines off and start running, because at this point, I think he knows that he's, uh, his days are limited here. He's definitely uh, not going to be having a good day. He's just watched his two bodies explode. Okay, so he's making a run for it. Uh, probably not going to help him, though, because we're probably still well within range. Something you must consider, though, guys, uh, with that being said, is, look, he's pounding it. He's getting the hell out of here. See if we can chase him down. He ain't going to outrun this. Ooh, he might get away. He might get away. Oh, I think he's going to as well. Oh, unless I can get him on this road afterwards. Okay, let's see if I can find this guy. Come on, where did he go? So yeah, guys, be aware that uh, we do have a 2,000 meter range. And that's quite a lot of distance, but it potentially could uh, could disappear quite quickly. Especially with this vehicle right now. He's already sort of punched out of my, out of my target reticle here. So yeah, I can't get a good lock. i got to wait till he comes into clear. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this guy. Oh dear. Let's hope we can... Uh, track him this way. Okay, here we go. Got him. Missile away. Let's see if we can chase this sucker down. See if we can outrun a javelin missile. I don't think he's going to be able to though. Missile's still on its way. Got him. Beautiful. Turret came off that one too. So there we go guys. Mission over. Mission complete. Uh, nice shooting. The javelin can be extremely deadly when correctly employed. So, just to review then guys. Um... The Javelin is a fantastic weapon system to use in this particular game. It really is. It's something that's very useful to have, um, especially if you have multiple fire teams with Javelin missiles. Uh, very, very useful to put in the back of some Bradleys or some Marders or wherever else kind of infantry carrier. Drop off a couple of teams into the wood line and off you go, continue with the rest of the battle group. They can also deny enemy areas. 
uh, quite nicely. Kakers obviously they have a nice uh, kill box area that can create nice arcs of fire. Uh, with the 2000 meter range you're covering a lot of distance there. I mean you're covering you know at least a K and a bit around you as a 360 uh, depending on what your fire arcs are. And the munition as you can clearly see is able to take out those tanks from long distance and one shot one kill. Uh, top down attack is very effective at taking out uh, Russian armor. So uh, definitely something you should consider when trying to create scenarios or being within the game itself and utilizing them in the game themselves. Don't let go of the infantry guys. Tanks are fantastic within this game, clearly the main focus, but infantry are going to help you substantially. So please don't neglect the infantry in there horrible little muddy boots, okay, because they're going to give you a lot of help, especially with weapon systems like this. I hope this tutorial gave you a little bit of a heads up on how to use the Javelin Missile. Any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I would also really appreciate it if you could stop by on the SteelBeastPro.com uh, website and leave a comment on Toy Guy's thread, which is, I believe, either on general discussion or somewhere on the forum uh, in regards to this particular tutorial he created, and thank him. I will be doing it myself because uh, I really appreciate people taking the time to create things like this. It's a small little scenario, but it really does help those who are new to the game um, and are not used to the weapon systems. And at least now, if you know this kind of layout and setup for this weapon, you can use it for your own scenarios and create your own missions and such. And you know, maybe you didn't know how to use the javelin, and you do now. So I hope you enjoyed, guys. Thank you again for watching. Please lick, uh, lick, <laughs> please hit that like, subscribe, and uh, button, please. And I hope you have a wonderful day. All the best, and bye bye.